All the Money in the World is directed by Ridley Scott, stars Michelle Williams, Mark Wahlberg, and Christopher Plummer, uh, not Kevin Spacey. And it's the story of uh, J. Paul Getty's grandson. Uh, J. Paul Getty, the richest man in the world at the time, what was this, like the 70s? He had all the money in the world, essentially. And his uh, grandson gets kidnapped in Rome, and there's a hostage negotiation. J. Paul Getty's like, I won't pay a cent for him to come back. He's just a cheap old son of a bitch. So uh, the mom, played by Michelle Williams, is desperate to get her kid back, is doing everything possible to negotiate. She's trying to get the ransom, like, lowered and lowered. Mark Wahlberg plays someone, uh, what is it, J. Paul Getty has Mark Wahlberg help her out. Quote, unquote, help her out with the whole situation. But it's a mother trying to get her kid back, and the, the grandpa just being an old dick, like Scrooge McDuck. Like, just, I have all this money. But I'm not going to use it for that. I'm just a fucking prick. This is based on true events, and yeah, that's a neat story, and let's just talk about the movie, okay? There's two controversies with this movie, you want to just get them out of the way. First one, the Kevin Spacey controversy. Yeah, it's fucked up, and um, I just want to say I credit them so much for what they had to do, because they were so close to this movie coming out, Kevin Spacey, that whole thing happened. They had to take him out of the movie and put in Christopher Plummer with reshoots. That's incredible because when you actually watch the movie, Christopher Plummer's role is pretty substantial. I thought it would be like, well, maybe he's in like 20 minutes or something. He was in a big chunk of the movie. He was in at least like 45 minutes or something. Maybe I'm overstating it, but he was in a lot of this movie and like I couldn't tell. If I didn't know in the back of my head that they reshot everything that Kevin Spacey did, I wouldn't have guessed. Like it's not obvious. There's no obvious reshoots. It's like masterfully edited in, they did it perfectly. So I just want to credit them for doing that, they did a masterful job there. And then the other controversy we'll save to the end because it has less to do with the actual movie. Ridley Scott as a director, he's very hit or miss. He can do The Martian and then also end up doing that Exodus Gods and Kings. And then he can do All the Money in the World the same year that he did Alien Covenant. The original Alien, Blade Runner, Black Hawk Down, a lot of movies I really like or love. And then he also did things like Hannibal, The Counselor, Robin Hood, Prometheus, which to me is on the positive side. So, like, the guy's very mixed. But, like, he's someone I'm still, I'm always intrigued, like Ridley Scott, because it's like 50-50 chance it might be a really good movie or it might be pretty bad. But I'd say for this one, this lands definitely on the good side. This is a good, solid movie, a solid effort by Ridley Scott. The guy overall... He's never had this specific style like a Scorsese or a Tarantino, but I think Ridley Scott does like direct movies really well. He has good taste a lot of the times and how to tell a story, and he's not like super conventional all the time. Sometimes he plays things weird. Like in this movie, it was so random. I thought it was going to be a stylistic choice. Like the movie starts in black and white, and then it slowly faded to color or the sepia tone light color. Some of the sometimes the movie is so desaturated, it almost hurt my eyes looking at it a few times. Like the saturation and brightness levels were so low. I was like, damn. And like he had black and white used like two or three times in the movie only. Odd choices, but okay. And aside from the moments where the colors were so like painful to my eyes, like just from the saturation, like it, it kind of hurts. They're dry and I just, ow. But other times, like it's a really pretty looking movie. You have these fantastic locations like Rome and the playing with the setting because it's in the 70s. Like for the most part, it's pretty convincing. And like, it's a good looking movie. Ridley Scott directs his actors pretty well for the most part. Michelle Williams is amazing in this movie. Michelle Williams, oh my God, I love her in everything. Everything I see her in, she's great. And in this, she is fantastic. She steals the show. A mother out to save her kid. It kind of reminded me in a totally different way of the movie Changeling with Angelina Jolie. That totally different movies, but something about a mother fighting for a child. I like it. She's really good, brings a sense of urgency, panic, and realism. Michelle Williams owns this movie. Christopher Plummer, for a dude that came in last minute, crushes it as J. Paul Getty. <sighs> the most punchable character in a movie this year. Like, really, you just want to wind up and hit that old man and keep hitting him. I wanted to beat that old man's ass. Oh my god, what a piece of shit. And if it was Kevin Spacey, probably even more so. But that's beyond the point. Christopher Plummer is great. And there's, a, there's like a hint of humanity where it's like, oh... They're gonna justify why, like, he's so awful as a person. Christopher Plummer has a great talent in this movie of being, like, super despicable, and you wanna just choke the life out of this old man, 
but it's not in a way where you just hate watching him. I'm still like enthralled watching him just act. It's like, he's great. You love watching him, but he's despicable. And then Mark Wahlberg, like, hey, how's it going guys? It's me, Mark Wahlberg. Hey, remember me in Pain and Gain? Daniel Lugo, I believe in fitness. And then I was in the Transformers, like, hey Optimus, what are you doing over there? Optimus Prime? Where's, where's Bumblebee at? But yeah, Mark Wahlberg, and a likable actor at the least. And uh, sometimes he can actually be very convincing and like compelling and give a great performance. Most of the time, he's playing Mark Wahlberg and it's maybe okay, depending on the movie. In this, it feels like Mark Wahlberg in 70s clothing, kind of just standing around delivering lines. He literally added nothing to the movie. He added absolutely nothing. And I like seeing him in movies, and I was like, wow, he literally brought nothing to this role. And it makes the whole controversy almost worse, because Mark Wahlberg is essentially a prop that gets to move around. He has one scene where it's like, okay, I'm digging Mark Wahlberg most of the time. He's just there. And let's just talk about the controversy now that the Michelle Williams and uh, Ridley Scott, when they came back for the reshoots, essentially did it for almost free. Michelle Williams took the bare minimum wage and ended up making less than $1,000. Mark Wahlberg made almost $2 million off of it. And then people were on his ass, so he donated to the Me Too Fund after making profits off of Kevin Spacey's sexual misconduct controversy and all this and that. Okay, like, that's been talked to death, and I'm like, Michelle Williams should have been paid more, obviously, but it was just in Michelle Williams' character to not make money off of this controversy and, like, the misfortune of others. So props to her. Mark Wahlberg demanded money, and then donating it, like... Okay, okay. My biggest question I'll ask is why would they be willing to pay him so much money in the first place when he adds nothing? If I were them, I'd be like, all right, we're not gonna pay you and we'll do reshoots and cut Mark Wahlberg out of the movie and put someone else who maybe adds something to the role. Just a thought. And talking about other actors that add less than nothing, let's talk about the grandson character played by another plumber, but he's not related to Christopher Plummer. Um, Charlie Plummer plays the kidnapped grandson and I don't want to like single him out and be like he's terrible, but it felt like he had a very blasé attitude about a whole kidnapping thing. Like it felt like he was underplaying it a little bit too much where I was like I I would be a little more panicked. Like he seemed like he just glazed over and was like, "Oh man, this is this is bad. They're going to cut off my ear." Well, shit. And Ridley Scott doesn't hold back. He makes this movie very brutal and violent at times. Probably too much, in my opinion. Like, it's a very talky movie with just human drama. And then it gets really fucked up and, like, tense at times. So, it's really good. The balance is never inconsistent. It's a compelling story. It maybe goes on a little bit too long and overall might not be as compelling as it could have been. Like, if they shortened it, it probably would have worked better. It just drags out a little too long for its own good. And then, yeah, like, when you have some actors not giving you anything compared to Michelle Williams and Christopher Plummer just owning this movie, and then Mark Wahlberg's over there like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm gonna say my lines, and I'm gonna get a big fat paycheck, and that's kinda it. You like my 70s suit? I got glasses on? And, and what, what do you want from me? But I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a good time. It could have been better, though. It felt like there was potential for utter greatness, and it fell a little bit short of that. But still, there's a lot of good talent that carried the weaker elements of it, and you gotta commend them for taking a movie that might have just, like, been seriously delayed, like, what do we do, we can't release it now. They just did some reshoots that were masterful and, like, restored the movie to the best quality they could. I really enjoyed all the money in the world. I'd give it a B plus. I think it's a solid movie. I think Christopher Plummer and Michelle Williams are way better than the movie as a whole. Like, they're wonderful. Comment below, tell me what you thought of the movie, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.